easy guys, Storm here from Cringy Dad Gaming. So in this video we're going to be discussing a hardcore survival game. One that's been out for quite some time but it's kind of got left behind. Now I did buy this a long time ago and I think I maybe was one of the people who fell foul to its hardcore nature at the beginning because I was big into playing games like Daisy and Scum. I couldn't quite get my head around the game at the beginning and I think that's what kind of turned me off a little bit at the start and from what I've seen people saying in Steam's mixed reviews the majority of the negative reviews of this game come from people who have only spent a short time in the game and have probably been getting frustrated with the way the game works. Now for me at this point in time, I decided that I wanted to go back and kind of look at some of the old games that had potential that I hadn't really invested enough time in. And I have to say that since I've put in a lot more time in this game and got my head around how it works and how the survival mechanics work, I'm actually having a really good time in the game. It has some really deep survival mechanics. It has gorgeous graphics from the CryEngine. And the weather system in the game is also really, really good. You've got these different weather effects, different types of storms, including radiation storms. You've got cold periods with snow. And I'm just really liking the feel and atmosphere of the game. One of the big things that I really like about this game as well is how it looks. There's these areas spread out across the island where you'll come across residential areas that really do look very post-apocalyptic. They are run down, there's these overgrown areas which would happen as time goes by without people maintaining landscape and stuff like that. Just old cars that also have like weeds and different bushes and that growing them. It just really gives it an overall post-apocalyptic feel. Now the game is also got kind of like a fallout vibe in it. The fact that this is after a nuclear war that's pretty much wiped out a lot of the Earth's inhabitants. I don't know if it was a worldwide nuclear war. Maybe it was. Maybe it's just located to this area. But this has caused a lot of the people who were caught up in that to become mutated. So this could be mutated humans, mutated animals. And there's a different variety of enemy types in the game. And they are pretty tough, if I'm honest. If you're coming up against some of these enemies early on in the game without any weapons, you're going to find it extremely difficult because they do do a lot of damage to you. Now, just bear in mind that in this video, I'm coming from a vanilla perspective. I'm not talking about the modded servers that you can play on where things may be tweaked to make enemy AIs harder or easier, whichever way it goes. Scavenging in the game for weapons is also extremely difficult at the start until you know where to look. The best thing that I found early on in the game is just to try and find a decent melee weapon like a baseball bat or something like that, get some nails and kind of beef it up a little bit in the crafting menu. Some of these baseball bats that I've got saw blades and things like that in them are pretty powerful for melee strikes and things like that but you know, if you've not found one of these early on in the game and you come across these enemies, it's best just to run away from them. There's no point in trying to fight them. They're going to do a lot of damage to you. And I just find that, you know, early on in the game, the main focus really should be on getting clean food and water. And what I mean by that is, again, another reason why a lot of people may have been turned off by this. You're going to be scavenging a lot of buildings and a lot of areas and you will find tins of food and drinks and things like that. But the thing is, if you don't inspect them first by using the scroll button on your mouse when you're hovering over the item and then using the word inspect, you'll get ill because the majority of stuff is either radioactive or it's gone stale and spoiled, which means you're going to likely get food poisoning. Now, if it says this item smells strange, then you want to stay clear of it. It's the same with trying to drink water from taps and toilets that you find in houses. Sometimes you'll check them and it will say the item appears to be fine. You'll drink the water and suddenly you've, you've got radiation poisoning because it's not safe because of the nuclear fallout from after this nuclear war. And I think for a lot of people who have maybe been scavenging around in the game and not really finding much because the loot is pretty slim, 
and the stuff you do find when you do find it is probably bad and you can't use it. I think that might be the reason why a lot of people kind of got fed up with the game. I mean, I'd say maybe more of the less hardcore players, the more casual survival game players. I think that's likely to have turned them off. And the fact that there's no tutorial or any sort of guide at the beginning of the game to be able to get you in the swing of how things work, it is one of those games where, you know, you're going to have to maybe watch a few YouTube videos and, you know, learn the core mechanics. Because the first thing I do now if I start a new life is I'll try straight away to find items to be able to make a water purification system, which you make by using some scrap metal or stone and a propane gas canister that you have to empty the gas out of before you can use it. It is then just as simple as putting down a plot sign which claims land that you can build on. You can then set up your water purification system. And all you got to do then is go off and find a jerry can, which are quite easy to find in the game. Empty the fuel out, fill it up at a stream or a dirty puddle on the floor, put it into your water purification system, add the wood to it, which hopefully you've got an axe to be able to chop down the logs. If not, you can find logs usually by scavenging around in buildings that have wood stacks. And then away you go with the purification. That would usually save your life early on in the game to get a decent amount of pure water. Food, however, is slightly different. Uh, if you've not found a weapon to be able to hunt animals with, you will sometimes come across these infected two-headed wolves. Well, they don't really look like wolves, but it says it's wolves meat when you've killed them. And once you've killed them, which they're relatively easy to kill, you've then got the meat from them, which you can drag and drop into your inventory. Now, you may not have the ability to be able to cook them yet, Although you can find grills within the game, like barbecue grills that you can add wood to to be able to cook. The easiest and quickest way in the game I've found to be able to eat food is to go into these diners and little restaurants that you find in towns and find salt because you can use that to cure the meat. It's really quick and straightforward and straight away you've got meat that you can eat. I think if these two little things were pointed out early on in the game for new players, I think it could have saved people having a lot of kind of negative views and frustration with the game because once you start looking through the crafting menu and seeing what sort of things you can make you know you can build bases you can craft all sorts of different furniture and decorations you can craft different weapons and attachments and there's quite a deep crafting system within the game once you get your head around the way the menu works yes the ui like that kind of HUD, your character HUD may not look great when you're in there, it doesn't look that streamlined and that clean, but it's functional and it works. The game really is about going out and scavenging and finding stuff that you can use. Once you've started finding some of this stuff and you've got a few weapons, you know, you've maybe found a few rifles and stuff by searching hunting cabins and different things like that. You can go off and hunt and you can also protect yourself from infected a little bit easy, although ammo is really, really slim. But again, you can craft some of the most basic ammo from gunpowder and sheet metal which you can do at a crafting table again these crafting tables are found in buildings around the map so i chose to build my base quite close to a crafting table so you know if i find any crappy ammo that i don't have a weapon for or i find like flares for a flare gun and things like that i can just break it down into gunpowder find sheet metal just by searching scrap piles and then off you go to be able to make you ammo but you find these little guides every now and then around the game, which kind of increases what you can craft. Like once you've read it and you've learned different levels of uh, different items, you can then start crafting new stuff, including different types of ammo. There are some military bunkers around, which are quite fun to explore. You do have to get the generator outside it up and running before you'll be able to get access to it. And you have to find a battery, a drive belt, oil and diesel fuel to be able to start the generator. Once you're in these military bunkers, there is sometimes a lot of decent loot in these places. So it's really cool to explore. Now there can be the risk of the infected mutants or other players potentially if you're playing on a PvP server. But there is an armory usually in these military bunkers where you'll be able to find some decent assault weapons and vests and helmets and things like that, different rucksacks and things like that. One thing they implemented a long time ago into the game was this outpost where there's AI traders and it's a safe area where you can go off and you can kind of sell and buy gear using these AM coins that you get within the game, which is like the in-game currency. 
I really like that. It really reminded me of one of the areas in uh, Fallout 4 um, where you can go off and buy different things from there. You can't get any quests or anything like that. It's not that type of game. It is purely a survival game. And uh, this, this area, though, is pretty cool. If you've created a base, you can pay to get a taxi back to your base because it is a long way to travel. And you can easily find this outpost by the three big floating balloons in the air, which you can't miss. You can pretty much see them anywhere on the map. Now the graphics, I want to talk about the graphics in this game because they really do make the experience a lot better for me personally. The overall design of the way they've made the game look, as I mentioned earlier, with the different weather systems and the foliage and just the way the game looks, it's just pretty nice on the eye, to be honest with you. And when the weather changes, it just changes the whole feel of the game as well. So I just feel with everything that the game has to offer in terms of, you know, the survival elements, it is hardcore. But the question is, is it too hardcore? Maybe it is too hardcore for some. And that's probably why people haven't given it a chance. Maybe the reason why there's not many players playing this game anymore is because the people who did enjoy playing it have been rinsing it and they've just kind of moved on to other games because things will get a bit boring and stale after a while. There's only so much of a game you can play before you start getting bored. And I'm relatively new into the game myself and I didn't really start understanding the game and you know what to do, what to avoid and where to find stuff probably until about 20 hours in. So I've been playing the game for about 20 hours. I've died a lot and learnt lessons from things. And that's kind of the experience of the game. That's what you've got to do with it. You've got to learn as you play through it because there's no hand in here with this game. But for me, this is a survival gem. It is a game that is really good. And it's a shame to kind of see it with mixed reviews on Steam. Although there's a lot of good survival games on Steam with mixed reviews. So I guess that doesn't necessarily mean a lot. But it, I mean, it's not negative and it's mixed. The game is quite well priced and, you know, this isn't an advert. I'm not getting paid for, you know, talking about this game or anything like that. But just for me personally, you know, I think the price is good for what the game offers you. And once you've got your head around the way you need to do things in the game, I really do think you can have a lot of fun in Miscreated. So I would highly recommend any of you hardcore survivalist fans out there have not played this game to go and check it out because, you know, there's not many people playing anymore. It is, I'd say, you could probably say it's a bit of a dead game. But that's actually fine for me because I don't care too much anymore for the PvP side of the games. I'm looking for a more just survival focused experience. So if I'm choosing to plan a server and there's only a couple of people in it, which usually is the case, then that's fine by me. You know, you might get some interaction with people if you're lucky enough to come across the few that are in the game. But I mean, there is in-game chat, there's voice chat and text chat as well. So you could always decide to meet up with people at the safe zone if you want, at the outpost and kind of talk to people and maybe team up if that's what you're looking to do. Now, the gun sounds in the game is probably where it kind of falls short a little bit. The gun sounds don't sound that great, if I'm honest. You know, some sound better than others, but the sound design overall is actually all right. But some of the guns sound a bit off. You know, that's probably my only kind of negative in the game at the moment that I can really talk about. Everything else seems to be OK uh, in the game itself. There's a few bugs here and there, but it's nothing game breaking, in my opinion. You know, I've played enough of this game now to kind of get through it okay, not get stuck anywhere, not find anything kind of not working how it should. So there we go, just to look at Miscreated, you know, is it too hardcore or not? You know, if you've got a particular feeling on the game, if you've played it, let me know in the comments what you think about the game. Is it too hard for a lot of people or is it just right or could it be tweaked still? Let me know. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to help support it and me as a content creator. It's totally free and if you've already subscribed, then thank you very much. So I'll catch you guys on another video and thanks for watching.